So back in 2016, as part of the Black Bay Heritage line, Tudor launched the Black Bay 36. And this was available in both black and a blue dial variant. Now, eight years on and with the release of the new edition back in 2023 with different dial variants and a different bracelet, how does this new shiny watch stack up against the original tool inspired watch of 2016? So if like me, you own one of these watches, is it worth upgrading to some of the new aftermarket straps and bracelets that are available for these watches? Or is it worth keeping it stock in OEM? I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey. Amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now, if you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and while you're at it, why not subscribe? Only 20% of my viewers tend to be subscribers, so what's stopping you? You keep coming back. Now I bought this watch for my wife back in 2019 and it's fair to say she's loved it quite a bit. She wears it most days for work. Uh, I do wear it occasionally because like I said, I think it's quite a, a crossover watch. It's got a unisex appeal. And I think if you want to wear a small under the radar watch, then you can't really beat it. Now, speaking of beating it, you can see from the marks on the case that my wife has, yeah, she loved this watch um, to death almost. Now, this watch has not been serviced. It's six years old and it still works really, really well. Now, when we bought this watch, it was just over £2,000. It's a 36 millimeter case, lug to lug, it's quite compact at 44 millimeters, 10.3 millimeters thick, so nice and slim. Lug width, which is a bit disappointing at 19 millimeters, making aftermarket uh, straps and bracelets a bit of a challenge, but you'll see later that I have managed to get some to fit and work quite nicely. Now, good water resistance of 150 meters, and we'll see later why that makes a difference. And with a weight of 122 grams, it's got just enough heft with all that stainless steel to, to feel like you're wearing something. Now this one does have the smiley face dial and it is filled with lots of uh, super luminova uh, as is traditional for the Tudor Black Bay range. So inside we have Calibre T600 which could be either an ETA2824 or a Sleater SW200. Beat rate at 28,800 vibrations per hour, power reserve of 38 hours and it has 25 or 26 joules depending on which movement you happen to get. So obviously self-winding, hacking seconds and I've tested this recently and it's sort of deviating between sort of plus one to plus eight. So it does run fast, which is good. Uh, and I wouldn't say it runs massively fast. So still within sort of cost parameters. Now what I'm going to do is just look at how this now compares with the current model, which was released in 2023. Now there's a couple of key differences. So firstly, we've moved from the Oyster style three link bracelet. These are all now the five link style Jubilee bracelet, or Jubilee style bracelet. Some will love that, some will hate it, and it's clear that they've moved it to more of a dressy piece. There's also a change to the dial where we've gone away from this sort of flat or sort of black and blue and more towards a sunburst or sort of gradient style uh, metallic dial, uh, which does look nice, but again, it's sort of playing to that sort of dressy nature. And we've also got what Tudor are doing more now with the smaller crown and sort of losing that crown tube, which I have to say, although it makes the watch look a little better, does make it quite difficult to um, set. Now, one of the main points that I picked out, other than the fact that the new one is massively more expensive and there's different sizes and colors, etc., um, is the water resistance has dropped from 150 meters to 100 meters. Now, I don't know why that would be. Maybe it's part of the more stringent METAS um, certification process. Don't know. Uh, or maybe it's just a cheaper way of doing it. But the one thing you will notice is the move from the smiley writing from self-winding to that sort of straight uh, chronometer, uh, officially certified. Now, it looks like two emojis, doesn't it? So you've gone from the smiley emoji to what is the sort of straight-faced emoji, uh, emotionless. So I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a loss there. But hey, you know, it's what most companies do. Now, what I do with most of my watches, I've got different strap options, you know, rubber straps, leather straps. Uh, I've got bracelet options for some of them as well. And I thought, well, why not give the Black Bay 36 a bit of treatment? Um, it's, we've had it for a while. It's, you know, it's one of the longest standing watches in our collection. So what I did is I reached out to my friends at Artem uh, who sent me a cell cloth style strap. And there's a link in the description to take you to the Artem site. Now they did supply me this strap free of charge so just to let you know. 
But I also, with my money, bought uh, an uncle bracelet, so the uh, Jubilee style. Now this is the one that doesn't come with the clasp because you can add the original Tudor clasp to this bracelet. So we're gonna have a look at it on the original Oyster style three link bracelet. We'll then look at it on the Jubilee bracelet. And then finally, we'll have a look at it on a silk cloth style strap. And it's blue, yeah, to match the dial. Why wouldn't you? So firstly, on the Oyster style bracelet, now this is obviously the OEM bracelet. It's the one that the watch is supplied with. Uh, as I said, it's 90 millimeter lug width. Now this bracelet is fully brushed with a bit of polish down the uh, flanks of the, the links. Uh, it's um, held together with, with screws and it's got the flip over lock with the ceramic um, pushers that most of the modern Tudors have uh, with the safety latch there as well. It's quite a nice package. Uh, the only downside is the lack of uh, micro adjustment with just the three holes for fine sizing. And I think you know, we've both found that that can be a bit of an inconvenience. So you tend to wear the watch a little bit looser. Now the overall construction of the bracelet is, is very nice. All these surfaces are nicely finished. There's no sharp edges. It doesn't pull the skin out of your, your arm. I find this quite a comfortable bracelet to wear anyway. And I think it's a really good reference point to start this comparison with. So if we now flick to the uncle bracelet. So this is a five link uh, Jubilee style and it sort of mimics what Tudor have done more recently. Um, now I don't mind it. Uh, my wife hated this bracelet, uh, she doesn't like it at all, uh, which is fine. Um, but, and I will say, I mean, it was 100 quid, um, so it's not massively expensive, but it's still 100 pounds, which is, which is a lot of money. Now, you do feel the difference. So this has some sharp edges. It does pull the hairs out a little bit, but I found most Jubilee bracelets, whether they're Rolex ones, whether it's the new Speedmaster style bracelet, they all pull my little hairy arms to bits, so I can't lay that blame squarely at Uncle on this one. Now it does, like I said, has have a few sharp edges. Um, you know, it's not going to have all of the refining processes that a more expensive bracelet's going to have. You know, that's just a fact of life. But I think for hundred pounds, it's quite a nicely put together bracelet. It uses pins and sleeves, so they are a bit of a pain to do, but it's not too bad if the right tools. Now moving on to the sailcloth strap from Artem. Now this is a blue strap. Now Artem do have 90 millimeter fittings. Uh, this one's got the white stitch, which I think matches quite nicely with the white indices. Now it doesn't taper a great deal. Uh, it goes from sort of 19 to 18 millimeters, but it is very comfortable and very compliant. Uh, it's got rubber backing, and although initially stiff, they break in very, very quickly. Um, so I do highly recommend Artem. I know they do send me free stuff, but I, I tend to wear them on all my watches. Uh, when I'm wearing a strap. Um, so check them out. There's a link in the description. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so be mindful of that. But you know, every little helps. So summing up, the Black Bay 36. Right, firstly, it isn't too small for a man. You can wear a 36mm watch. Uh, you've just got to be you know, mindful of the fact that when you look at it on your wrist, this is a 42 millimeter Speedmaster, by the way, on an Artem strap, I hasten to add. Uh, you may think it looks too small, but if you just catch yourself in the mirror uh, or just do the old watch in the mirror thing like they'd have in the, the dealers, it doesn't look bad at all. It, it's all in the mind. So 36 is fine. I mean, most people you know, back in the day wear 34 millimeter, 36 was big at the time. So don't be afraid of a 36 mil watch. Uh, and if you've got a reasonable collection, you've probably got a range of sizes anyway, and sometimes you just want to wear something small. So definitely not to be discounted. Now the question of should you change up the hardware to you know, keep it fresh? Now I do that with all my watches, uh, be it the Speedy, which is uh, you know, renowned for being a strap monster, or my IWC, or even my Planet Ocean. I wear a, a selection of different straps, rubber, sailcloth, leather, uh, or the original bracelet. So I'm a sucker for it. Now, some people are, some people don't like in the, taking the bracelet off because they're afraid they're going to damage the watch. And I get that, that's fine. But if you do want to do it, then I'm not so sure I'm a big advocate of the uncle bracelet. It's for me, uh, it sort of detracts from the tall watch aspect of the original Black Bay 36, which is a bit more less precious. So yeah, it's got the matte flat dials, blue and black, yeah, nothing flashy, 
not too shiny. The newer ones, you know, they've got the, the sparkly bits on them. They've got the, the, the shiny dials. They've pushed them into a more dressy position. These ones, more to watch. So I think original three-link bracelet looks fantastic. Uh, I think you can rock it on a on a sailcloth strap quite nicely. I think that works. Probably on a NATO as well. I think 20mm NATO would look okay on this. So I much prefer the old version. I get the new version. Yeah, there's a range of colours, diamonds and all sorts of stuff. But I think Tudor have pretty much lost the original appeal of this watch. So a bit of a shame. But hey, there's other watches available that, that you can now uh, you know, enjoy from Tudor. Like the, the Black Bay 54 that maybe has some of the essence of this. Albeit with a dive bezel. So I'll be interested to hear what, what you guys think. Yeah, Have you changed your Tudor bracelet recently? There's plenty of options out there. And what, what do you tend to land on? Do you tend to go back to the original strap or do you tend to sort of head out towards sort of aftermarket? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Andy. This has been the English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.